If you're in a cooler climate and your warm bit hasn't been inside for the winter, you may be about to see a population explosion. We're gonna go into that on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Warm Company. It never ceases to amaze me. Every spring when temperatures consistently stay above 60 degrees outside, the warm bins I keep in my barn here just outside of Philadelphia go through a population explosion. This is after a few months of them pretty much languishing throughout the colder winter months. The worms slow down their eating and their reproduction as well. But once spring rolls around, the population comes back with a vengeance. Now, why is that? Did the worms just decide to start getting busy and reproducing again? Maybe, but what's really happening is that the cocoons the worms created over the winter all likely started hatching at the same time. And here's why. To keep a warm bed going, you really need to keep the temperatures in the vermicompost over 55 degrees. This is true for red wigglers and European nightcrawlers. And for those of you using African nightcrawlers, that temperature really needs to be over 70 degrees. As the temperatures approach 55 degrees and go below that, waste processing, reproduction, and general activities start to decline. You won't see any population growth because the worm cocoons produced in the late fall and through the winter are not gonna hatch. Under normal circumstances, these cocoons hatch 21 days after they're formed, and the babies become sexually mature adults about 42 days after that. But in the winter, they'll remain in a suspended state of animation, kinda like Han Solo when he got frozen in carbonite at the end of Empire Strikes Back. These cocoons will stay unhatched, but still viable, until, and this is general rule of thumb, temperatures in their habitat reach 55 degrees and remain there for three days. At that point, all of the cocoons will hatch right around the same time, and they'll become adults right around the same time. So you may go from wondering where all your worms went in February to wondering where all these worms came from in April. It's pretty awesome. This isn't just worms in a worm bin though. This happens in the wild too, especially for the Amethyst agresta species, also referred to as an Asian jumping worm. And this is not awesome. These guys are a real problem in the upper Midwest of the US through the Northeast. And they're consuming a protective layer of decomposing leaves that serve as a habitat for the forest ecosystem. And they're doing it at an alarming rate. These worms don't survive the winter, which is a good thing, I guess. But their cocoons do survive and they all hatch when the temperatures consistently remain above that 55 degree mark. The other hard part is that the cocoons are very difficult to tell from the surrounding leaf area because they're so dark colored. So you don't see the adults around here in the spring, but you'll see gobs of them come summer and fall. Okay, so I hate to end on a bit of a downer note like this, but the whole point of this video is to say that those of you with outdoor worm populations in cooler climates are likely to see your populations literally explode. Guys, this is a Verna composting channel and I try to give you as much info as possible on how to turn your food waste into worm castings. If this is something you wanna do, I've got a great resource right now for you to download. It's the PDF version of our ultimate guide to vermicomposting, where we cover anything from the basics of vermicomposting, how to start and maintain a worm bin, the financial opportunities in vermicomposting and more. Just click this little link above my left shoulder and you can sign up to get that guide immediately. All right, fingers crossed that your warm bins spring back to life when the temperatures get warmer. We're gonna see you on the next video.